from Lincolnshire. The sound of bells from St. Wolfram's Church with its slender spire standing 281 feet above the surrounding Lincolnshire countryside. When he saw the west front of this church, John Ruskin swooned. And a certain Father Stanton, whenever passing Grantham in a railway train, used to make the other gentlemen in the carriage stand up and raise their hats at the beautiful sight of St. Wolfram's Church. The coming of the Great Northern Railway and local industry, particularly agricultural machinery, has kept Grantham from being too quiet a market town in the past. These days, one of the major local industries is making earth-moving equipment for projects like building roads and dams all over the world. These modern machines have been developed from a tradition of steam rollers and steam traction engines, some of which were still in use as recently as the late 1950s. Coming into Grantham from the Great North Road, visitors are greeted by the statue of Isaac Newton, and Charles Dickens describes the nearby George Hotel in Nicholas Nickleby. And on the site of one of Grantham's oldest inns, King John held court in 1213. But overlooking all this is reputedly one of the six most beautiful parish churches in England, where now we join the congregation as they sing, Christ is the King. St. Wolfram was born in the 7th century in France, and a church is dedicated to him there. Here in England, there are only two churches named after him, 
one in Sussex, and of course, this one in Grantham. Walk around the north side of the church and above the fine 13th century windows, evil faces stare out at you. They're placed there because traditionally, the north side is the devil's side. Carry on round to the south side and you'll see that 14th century craftsmen were carving in more flowing lines and these designs are often found in Lincolnshire churches. And a century on, the lines had become straighter, the perpendicular style used here in the windows of the Corpus Christi Chapel. Yet after many centuries of work by many different craftsmen, the overall result has been that St. Wolfram's is a place of great beauty for worship and for singing the praise of God. Lawrence Bond is a church architect and has a special interest in St. Wolfram's. I was born in Grantham, not very far from here, and within sight of this church spa. I was baptized here, and I was confirmed in the church. For a thousand years, men and women have worshipped and prayed on this spot, and have received strength and courage and guidance, seeing the very stones that you and I are looking at today. I have come down a flight of stone steps from the chancel into this uh, crypt chapel uh, with its um, stone vaulting on a central pillar, uh, which was uh, built in the 14th century. And one of our great treasures is this stone altar uh, which is the original one, uh, and uh, escaped uh, destruction at the Reformation. I'm sometimes asked why I consider it uh, worthwhile uh, to spend all the money and care and work that is needed to maintain this great building. Well, I believe that a building like this is a work of the spirit. And in presenting a church like this, cared for, used, and explained to the ever-increasing thousands of people who come visiting churches is to expose them uh, to beauty and to the heights to which, by the grace of God, a man's spirit can attain. Now, 
I have been asked to choose the next hymn, and I have chosen Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. Good came to Grantham in 1912 and followed his father as a baker. Now we'll mix the dough, seven pounds of flour, and I'm just going to turn it out onto the board and knock it up again and get all the gas out of it. Then weigh it off and mould it into and put it into the tins where it will rise for about three quarters of an hour and then put it in the oven for another 40 minutes. Now we have to weigh them at one pound because a loaf loses approximately two ounces in baking. And by law, a loaf should weigh one 14 ounces when baked. It was horse and carts in those days for delivering. I can remember the mills coming with a lorry to pack the bread on, big loaves. They weren't little loaves like we know them today. They were quartan loaves in those days, big tins. Of course, that was in the olden days when they had coal-fired ovens. And uh, one had to light the fire between each batch. And of course the war ended and it moved to Swinegate, where we lived since 1917. Of course, St Wolfram's Church was so nice and handy and it wasn't Sunday without going to church.
When Jesus said, I'm the bread of life, he wasn't actually meaning in bread in its natural form as we know it. It, mean, it meant in the spirit, the Holy Spirit. My choice of him is Onward Christian Soldiers because it is a rousing tune and I think everyone knows it. Not just our own church, other churches as well. Salvation Army, Baptists, Nonconformists, they all know that hymn. Rosemary Anderson came to England from Germany 16 years ago. Mrs. Anderson, why did you come to Britain in the first place? I got a job and um, about 16 months later uh, I got married. Um, I was married for about 10 years and then I'm afraid it broke up. You turned back and fell back to God for support then in this time of difficulties? It's something so dreadful to happen. Um, that you realize that um, you can't rely on people 100% and uh, but you do know that you can rely on God and uh, it's the only way of getting through such a difficult period. I definitely found all the support in the church and the help, uh, particularly being away from home. Um, the, the church background helped a lot um, uh, and I'm convinced that since then or through this experience my faith has deepened and grown. As of all the pain and unhappiness of the breakup of your marriage, has this affected your understanding of love? Of love? I don't know, but um, of, uh, I think it made me a lot more tolerant towards other people and other situations in life. 
What's your choice of him, then, and uh, why have you chosen it? Um, I would like uh, Lord speak to me uh, so that I may speak. I think it expresses a prayer which is appropriate for every day in saying, Lord, speak to me, Lord, guide me, uh, strengthen me, and then most of all, um, Lord, use me, use even me, just as I willed and when and where, until thy blessed face I see, thy best, thy joy, thy glory share. looks after everything connected with the bells at St Wolfram's. We were ringing Grand Cicatus, which is um, a method for only an odd number of bells. The front nine bells ring and the tenor tolls at the back is always an intense place. And it's a well-known um, method. Uh, you can walk into any belfry in England and call Grand Cicatus and most people will get up and ring. It's part of my life and has been for 25 years. Um, started in 1954 when I was still at school and uh, been going ever since. Look to travel guy, gone. We used to cycle to school, a friend and myself, and one day he said that he'd got to wind the clock in St Wolfram's church, and he said, would I like to go in and see him wind the clock? And uh, I came up into the belfry for the first time, saw the ropes. Um, within a week, the tower captain, Sid Proctor, had taught me to ring, and we were ringing rounds on Sunday morning. Originally, when I first started, it was my hobby, and uh, it was through that that my Christian faith followed on. The two have grown together as, uh, as the years have gone on. The actual process of ringing is a marvellous experience. You go into a world of, of your own when eight or ten ringers get together and are all concentrating on the uh, job in hand. And it's like a meditation. My choice of him is uh, the day thou gavest Lord is ended. The Christian religion is going on all around the world 24 hours a day and, uh, and we usually find that bells are ringing 24 hours a day as well.
Mandy Edgar recently visited a Roman Catholic mission on the shores of Lake Victoria in Kenya. I went out as a representative of my church, St. Mary's Catholic Church in Grantham. We adopted the mission three years ago. And what exactly did you see there? What was life like at the mission? It was magic. <laughs> Absolute magic, it really was. Uh, I don't think I've ever envied anybody anything in my life, but I envied these people. I saw misery, I saw disease, leprosy, polio, malaria, but never once did I see a miserable face. And I learned a great deal from that. Can you put your finger on what it was that you, you think they had that you'd like to have for yourself? Happiness. The simplicity of their life, I envied. And they had such faith and such hope. And would you like to go back there someday? Oh, yes, very much so. If I could pick up my family here and just go back out there, I could quite easily leave everything else behind. And Mandy, could you tell us what your hymn choice is and why you've chosen it? My choice of hymn is Lord for Tomorrow and Its Needs. It's always been one of my favourite hymns, but since I came back from Orian, it has meant a great deal more to me. Rex Howe is rector of St Wolfram's Church. The spire never fails to impress me. Not simply that it's a building which has stood the test of time, but as a sign of a community to which I belong and in which I have a place. I have roots and I have a future. For several years I was uh, living and working in Hong Kong. That's a very dynamic and successful place. And as you probably know, there are monster buildings, and it is the great city of about five million people. And at times, one can almost feel dwarfed and threatened by these big buildings. And for a lot of people there, there, there are no sense of roots and little hope for the future. I want to help people find roots in Christ, to know that they belong to him and with him can face the future. Now, St. Peter has a rather good phrase. He says, Christ is our living stone, and we are living stones, which together with him are to be built into a spiritual building. Thank you, Lord, our living stone, for the Christian family in this place. Help us to know that because we are built on you, we belong to one another. Turn our hearts to your world in compassion, that we may be ready for all that lies ahead. Fill us with your joy and hope in believing, and may your peace be with us always. Amen. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this night and forevermore.
Hello, and welcome back to St. Wolfram's, where this evening we're joined by children from all over Grantham to hear their songs of praise. With me now is Andrew Telford. Now, Andrew, your school chose this first hymn. What's it called? It's called Keep Me Travelling Along With You. And what does all that mean to you, then? It means to me that God will be with me throughout life. And do you have a picture of God in your mind, or what? He's the creator of the world, the greatest person in the whole universe. But what can he do, though? He forgives you for anything bad you do, and things. And has God ever forgiven you? Yes, sometimes I have a row with my sister, and I often go to my bedroom to pray, and when I come out, I feel new strength to tell my sister that I'm sorry. Castevan and Grantham Girls' School, once attended by no less promising a local young lady than Margaret Roberts, better known, of course, as Margaret Thatcher. Well, what does the present generation of young people of Grantham feel about life, and what do they want to do with it? Well, I want to become a tennis player, but I do want to help people in general as well. I don't just want to just be me. <laughs> I don't know, really. Well, mainly getting good qualifications. Balls for poor scholars. He left in his will some money to be given to the to these places after he died. He was a very courageous man because in the Civil War he called Cromwell a devil because he believed that the Royalists were right. And he didn't like him because he led victorious attacks on and always defeated the Royalists. He preached to Crom Cromwell's soldiers and he won many of them over to his side. And he got fined because of this, £840. But because he helped the borough mm. of Grantham, then he, his fine got taken down to £640. He was born in Grantham, and um, his parents were rich. They were f shepherds, were they? Mm. And, and they were very rich. And he went to um, Oxford and Cambridge universities and got a very good um, education. Our form have chosen Fight the Good Fight because we thought it was a very good example of what Thomas Hurst did. 
He was a good man and he kept on fighting for his rights. The National School has devised a mime with the theme of helping others. Victoria Spencer-Jones is one of the players. but this is a bomb. Um, after the panic, you jump over the side of the benches and then if you, the deaf boy sit in the middle. Because I've got a deaf mother, I have to go and rescue him because I'm the only one who realises he's deaf. I have to be very careful because of the bomb. And then I go up to him, get hold of him on the shoulder, turn him round and talk to him. There's a bomb under the store. Come and jump over the side. My mum taught me lip breathing. First she said, um, hello Vicky. Then she said it without a voice. She says, what did, I, what did I just say? And I said, you just said, hello, Vicky. That's how I learned to lip read. Sometimes I wonder what it's like to be deaf. Put my fingers in my ears and I can't hear a single thing. I think me mother, Mrs. Mose, is... Um, when someone's on the telephone, I think she misses that most because she would like to hit, because she would like to chat with them, but she can't because she's deaf. Oh, it's diffused. Our school has chosen the hymn Cross Over the Road because we have been working about caring for other people.
Katie Beavers goes to Earlsfield County Primary School. She has spina bifida. What's wrong with these legs then, Katie? I don't like it. Steve? Yes. What sort of things do you do when you're not here in school, Katie? Sometimes I'm at the hospital. But the doctor's mad. What goes on at the hospital? Anything. Anything? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Well, what do these doctors get you to do? Get me, get me to play with babies. Play with babies? Yes. Like a nurse? <laughs> do you like doing that? No. no. <laughs> you don't like babies, do you? Yes, I do like babies. But you don't want to be a nurse? No. What else do you do then when you're not at the hospital? I come to school. And you like it here? Yes. After school, anything then? Any clubs or games and things? When I'm off, when I'm, when it, when it's, um, when we have a break off school, if, it, if there's anything, if it's snowing and you can't go out and you can't go to school, you have to, um, you have to, or oh, sometimes I go out to this club and it's for the spider if you What goes on there? You just play. Sometimes you talk. Sometimes you have, sometimes you look at these photographs. It's got a big thing. When you're not here in this room, what else do you do here in school? Well, sometimes when, when we're not at here, we, work, we sometimes play. You play? Yes. That sounds a lot of fun. And what sort of playing do you do then? Sometimes I walk around the playground, sometimes I walk around the grass. We do races on Wednesday. Races? Yes. You like racing? Yes. But I, they're going to give me some jobs. <laughs> yes. What sort of job? Holding the rope, giving the seats out. They're little teddy bears, only about that size. Teddy bears? Yes. And you like giving out the sweets? Yes. Do you like helping other people like that then, Katie? Yes. Why? Why do you think? Because it's just nice helping other people. You're a brownie too, aren't you? Yes. They help other people. Yes. Is that why you wanted to be a brownie? Yes. Oh, I didn't get myself in. My cousin got me in. Did she? Yes. How did she do that? She, well, I, she, she let me go to a disco and that's for the brownies. And, and her brownie teacher said, would you like to come to brownies? And sometimes um, I go swimming on that night on Wednesdays. So I go to brownies, then I go swimming. You have a busy whole time here in yes. Grantham, don't you? Yes. It's all a lot of fun, isn't it? Yes. And you, you manage to squeeze in some riding on horses, don't you? Yes. And what do you do there, then? Um, uh, I don't jump. I don't jump. I don't, know what I don't like jumping, really. Um, I have my mum beside me for because if I fall off, I don't get I forgot a hat, though. I have all, diff all sorts of different horses. I don't know the one I usually ride on. It's all different ones, like Beauty and... Um, Head and some others, and, and there's one called Star, but they've all got coughs. Are they? Yes. Why is that? They've been smoking? No, I don't know. Well, now then, Katie, what hymn have you chosen? Glad that I am I. Glad that I live am I. And why have you chosen Glad that I live am I? Because I like that song. Singing it this morning. Okay. Duncan Hiller and his class have been writing about old age. Well, I decided to write a poem when my uh, 
teacher asked us, the whole class, to uh, write a story about an old woman. And then I went up to ask her if I could do a poem, because I thought I could get the words through more clearly, my meaning through more clearly. And the words would be stronger. The fire flares away in the hearth. Her wrinkled face shows the marks of age. She sifts the memories of past days through her mind. Her face twitches to make a faint smile. She remembers the holiday in America, the towering skyscrapers, the huge office blocks, the rushing people and cars. But that has gone now. Life's novelty has worn off. The smile disappears. Now a blank expression appears. Her days are limited. Her movements are limited. Yet her weary, lonely life carries on. I think some old people are lonely, but some of them have big houses and are rich and can afford to keep other people in the house with them so that they can be near to the old person. I think when I grow older, I will be lonely because all my children would have grown up and they would have had children to look after for themselves and they wouldn't have any time for me. some of the girls from St. Hugh's School are going to perform a dance drama called Gethsemane.
Lord our God, we thank you for all the good things of life, for our homes and our families, our schools and our friends. Help us to remember those less fortunate than ourselves and help us to share our happiness with others in all that we do. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen. amen. May God the Father bless you and keep you in his love. May God the Son go with you and strengthen you in his service. May God the Holy Spirit fill you with his joy and peace, now and always. Amen.